Hi there, everybody. This is Lee, and I'm talking about some civil rights groups that are doing some surprising things, uh, specifically the NAACP and the Urban League. This is an article by Lee Fang at The Intercept. It's dated February 13th, and it says, Civil rights groups funded by telecoms back Donald Trump's plan to kill net neutrality. And like I said, that is the NAACP. That's also the National Urban League. The Asian Americans Advancing Justice. And then um, Organizing for Chinese Americans and various other civil rights groups are criticizing the uh, legal mechanism used by the Obama administration to accomplish net neutrality. And so they want the, what they're, these civil rights groups are saying is that they want the open internet rules to be written by statute, meaning that they want the Republican-led Congress underneath Donald Trump's authority, um, so to speak, uh, to take control of the process. Um, and this is the precise approach that is actually favored by the industry. And it seems like none of these civil rights groups are actually responding to a request for comment for their decision making. I mean, although this is not the first time that we've seen strange voting or strange supporting of various um, matters that just don't really make a lot of sense. And we find that sometimes it's because these groups receive major funding, major corporate funding, and then they throw their support to whichever the way their fund funders want them to throw that support. Um, in fact, assisting groups such as Walmart and various other industries, um, AT&T, things like that. And so basically, we have our civil rights groups opposing, what it comes down to is opposing net neutrality. And, um, you know, we've had the Congressional Black Caucus that um, obeyed its lobbyists and threw its support to Hillary Clinton and tried to attack Bernie Sanders and then, you know, claim that they wanted to superdelegates because, you know, for various reasons, they try to explain it. Well, Bernie Sanders wanted to get rid of the superdelegates, and it, it just didn't make any sense. And the reason why it doesn't is because their votes have been purchased. Their voice has been purchased, and their support has been purchased. Um, and not by the people, because we cannot afford them. <laughs> they, they take corporate money. And so, I mean, these are some groups that also have, um, you know, used to be leaders in the civil rights era, and they've become anti-Black Lives Matter groups now, speaking out against Black Lives Matter. The children, their youth, their children and grandchildren um, who have um, serious concerns, and they're looking for leadership and assistance, and they're not finding it because, again, these groups have been purchased. I'm going to post a link to this article in the description. And you can see for yourself what Lee Fang has found out about the willingness of certain civil rights groups to sell their votes to the highest bidder, um, no matter who it hurts. Um, if it hurts internet freedom, if it hurts um, the criminal justice uh, being used against their own children and grandchildren, you know, they'll support what they need to support if they... If it, it, if it means, you know, supporting Hillary Clinton over a progressive and Demi, uh, Bernie Sanders, they'll do that. And it's very sad, um, but, you know, we just have to face it. It, it is what it is. And then take steps to um, maybe take control back from people who have lost control over themselves and their voices and their own minds. It appears that some of them have actually lost their minds, actually. <laughs> so anyway, um, we have to face it. It's hard. It's a hard truth, but there it is. You know, it's not going to help to pretend that it doesn't exist or to try to defend against it. But recognize, recognize it for what it is and then take steps to find solutions around it. Good luck.